I've actually met accomplished Thomists, people who study Thomas Aquinas. They've never heard of this story. I don't know if it's apocryphal. I've heard it from Dominicans. I've heard it several times. I've read it. But the story goes that around the year 1265, so this would be the year that Thomas Aquinas's friend, St. Bonaventure, let me just back up here. Thomas Aquinas was the greatest mind, besides Albert the Great, that the Dominicans had. And Bonaventure was the greatest mind that the Franciscans had. And they studied together in Paris. They received their, their master, which is really equivalent more to a doctorate, in Paris. At the same time, they were both ridiculed and challenged because they were of the mendicant orders, that is, the begging orders of the Dominicans and the Franciscans. The Benedictines and the seculars and the uh, Augustinians weren't so sure about these newfangled orders called the Dominicans and the Franciscans, and they tried to prevent these men, these scholars, from receiving their diplomas. So they were friends. They worked together. You'll remember when the Pope commissioned the Corpus Christi Feast, he asked Bonaventure and Thomas Aquinas to write the lyrics, the music for the feast day. Both of them did. When Bonaventure heard Thomas Aquinas's, he tore up his own. And so what we celebrate at Corpus Christi in the traditional rite comes from Thomas Aquinas. In fact, when people hear the opening music of all my videos at, New Saint Tom, at the New St. Thomas Institute, they're like, what is that music? I'm like, that's Thomas Aquinas. You're hearing Thomas, I mean, not his voice, but you're hearing the music, the, the, the poetry, the glory um, of Thomas Aquinas. He was not a robot. He was a mystic. I mean, he was super smart, but he was also a poet and a, and a mystic and a man with a, a heart that was just swelling for our Lord Jesus Christ. So you have to understand that the, the lives of Thomas Aquinas and Bonaventure parallel often. And in 1265, Bonaventure was appointed by the Pope as to become the Archbishop of York in England, which is interesting. Uh, York, you know, goes way back in time. That's where Constantine was originally hailed as uh, Caesar. Bonaventure was reluctant about this. In fact, he actually never took possession of the Archbishopric of York. So the story is around this time, Thomas Aquinas is worried. He's worried that the Pope is going to make him into a bishop. Thomas Aquinas was famous. He was widely consulted by kings, archbishops, cardinals, popes. He, he was just recognized in his day as a man of great sanctity and, a great, and of great knowledge. So all of this being the case, Bonaventure gets tapped to be a bishop. Thomas Aquinas is worried. Why is he worried? Well, if you read Thomas Aquinas' biblical commentaries, and I highly encourage people to do that. People read the Summa Theologiae. They read the Summa Contra Gentiles. Um, they'll read commentary, his commentaries on Aristotle. All that's great. I've read it. But I think where Thomas Aquinas really shines is in his commentaries on Scripture. So if you read his commentaries on Hebrews and on, I can't remember if it's First Timothy or Titus, going off memory here, but he talks about how in his time period, the 1200s, the episcopate is corrupt. He talks about how in the early church, I think this is in the commentary on First uh, Timothy, how in the early church there were you know, he didn't say charismatic gifts, but what he talks about, there were miracles. There were gracious events that revealed who the Holy Spirit wanted to lead. And he gives some examples like, I think it's Pope Fabian, uh, St. Nicholas, uh, Timothy, Titus, and others, um, that there was this manifestation of who should be a bishop. But in his time, the 1200s, not so much. And so you have all these men who are performing the office of bishop who are unworthy, who are worldly, who are given to sin, who are given to the flesh. And there's, I mean, he recognizes what's kind of amazing. We think about our time period. Uh, think about even in the 1200s, Thomas Aquinas. So he begs the Blessed Virgin Mary, please don't let the Pope choose me as a bishop. And he's actually concerned, anxious that he will become a bishop. You know, his family had set him up for a Catholic ecclesiastical life of success, which he threw away. He ran away from it, literally ran away from it and became a Dominican friar, poor, homeless in a way. 
So he begs and begs and begs the Blessed Virgin Mary, and she appears to him. This is the one apparition that I know of, of the Blessed Virgin Mary to St. Thomas Aquinas. And her apparition is simply to confirm to Thomas Aquinas that she has interceded for him and granted the favor that he asked, that Christ has agreed through the intercession of the Virgin Mary that Thomas Aquinas will not be a bishop. And until his death in 1274, he was never appointed, certainly not consecrated, as a bishop. So his one, it's interesting, his one deep prayer and then his apparition of the Virgin Mary was, don't worry, you won't be a bishop. Which goes as a warning for clergy who are trying to climb the ladder of the hierarchy like Theodore McCarrick did. Here's a great saint who had all the gifts and the knowledge to be a great bishop, but who realized that that vocation could perhaps corrupt him.